Good morning, everybody. Come on, get on your feet. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. God is worthy. We're going to start at 50 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour this morning. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout in the dark with the voice of triumph. Let everything that hath breath praise you the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. We will bless his name. We will praise his name this morning. We're going to begin this service a little different today. Sitting at the Bridge Builders meeting yesterday, fellowship, I listened to Sister Arlene as she gave the testimony of what God did last Sunday. Listen to this. used to being up here, so y'all bear with me. Um, first of all, last Sunday, you know, the service, if you were here, um, it was a, the pastor had it, the deacons and, the, and all the pastors stand up here. It was a healing service. If you wanted your healing, you need to come up and get your healing. I've been in services like that before. And, um, and, and I felt that pull. I didn't go because, truthfully, the devil can put stuff in your brain and in your mind that is just a lie and he can trick you. Because I felt like, well, I'm just so undeserving. Honestly, that is how I always feel. I'm so undeserving. Um, and also, you, you question, you can feel that pull. When you, when you know what I'm talking about, um, you feel that pull that you should go up. That's God. And then you question your own self, is that, is that me? Is that God? That's the devil trying to trick you. When you feel that pull, you need to come up. Because he'll take your miracle from you. But... Robert's devotional yesterday and Bridge Builders, if you guys missed it, y'all missed it. Because it was good. <laughs> and I felt that 15 minute or whatever devotional, I felt the presence of God in there. I had no idea what he was going to talk about. But he talked about um, hearing, hearing from God and knowing that that voice from God and knowing and recognizing it and knowing it's just not you. Um, I couldn't wait really for him. The more he talked, I'm like, Lord have mercy. Inside myself, I'm like, if he don't, when he said I'm about to wrap it up, I'm like, thank the Lord. Because I got something to say. <laughs> and I stood up and I told last Sunday, as many of y'all know, I have seizures had one two weeks ago out there in the foyer um, and I know God can heal me from seizures um, I've been always had them just hit my head when I was 40 turned 40 that's why I have them but he can take that away from me and I know it but I've been having headaches for weeks now and I've been telling Robert I've got a headache and I don't I don't get headaches because I take seizure medication. That kind of numbs my brain so I don't have seizures. Keeps me from headaches. But I kept getting this constant headache that wouldn't go away and nothing. I took, took care of it. And I thought, well, it's got to be my sinuses. I'm having problems with my ears, pain in my ear, even my hearing. Um, I was really getting worried. And, and memory. Oh, we don't even talk about that. But I was so concerned. I've been telling Robert, I, I've got these headaches and they just won't go away. I don't know what it is. And it's bothering me. So, but Sunday, I felt that pull right there. Come up, I need to go get my miracle. But I started getting in my head again. Is that really you, God? Or is it just me thinking that? Is it really you? 
And after a back and forth, I was like, okay, I'm going up. But I felt like I needed to go to Sister Beverly. Don't know why, but I went to Sister Beverly. And I told her that I thought maybe it was all sinus problems that's just backed up. I don't know. But I went to her and I told her that I had seizures and I'm trusting in God. He's going to believe, he's going to heal me from those seizures. Stood up, should have been asking and praying about them years ago, take them away from me. <laughs> but I didn't. And she prayed for me. She rebuked it. And she told me I was healed. God had healed me from my headaches. And I felt my headache and my head subsiding before church was over. It was just going away. And it went away. And I called, I text Mina the next day. I said, tell your mom I still don't have a headache. And Tuesday, tell her I don't have a headache. <laughs> God, heal me from my headaches, y'all. I'm, I'm telling you. If you need a miracle, there's no reason why we can't have another miracle service today. And he can heal you. And if you feel that pull, it's not just you. It's God. You got to listen to that, that inner and that pull. You got to listen. And he can give you your miracle. It doesn't matter if it's physical financial, whatever your miracle is, he can give it to you. But if you stand in your seat, you know, it, it's cre you're doubting God. You got to come up and get it. You got to come up and then not, not just get it. You got to tell it as well. Now, I never told Robert any of this. I kept this to myself. Didn't say a word. And I just waited every day, every day. Because I'm going, was that really you, God? I still don't have a headache. My head feels lighter. But I shared it with my kids on Wednesday night when I taught them. Because it went right along with our lesson. And I told them what God can do. And when I said it, Taylor said, It was amazing. I love teaching those kids, Laura and I. We love them to death. And, um... It's just amazing. Sometimes they teach us. Come on, praise the Lord. As we begin this service, I proclaim healing through the airwaves and in this building. By the authority of Almighty God, I cancel every demonic appointment everything that the devil has been assigned to put on you I cancel it in Jesus name receive your healing today in Jesus name be healed by the power of God in Jesus name let's have church and all my words fall short I've got nothing new how could I express my gratitude I could sing these songs as I often do but every song must end but Lord you never do so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again This morning, come on, give the Lord praise, hallelujah. Oh, and I've got one response, I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide. Lord, I will worship. 
God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors and he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Everybody say, there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, yeah, we shout out your praise. Oh, yeah, we sing to the God who heals, sing to the God who saves, sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross, then he rose up from the grave. My God still rolling stones away. Everybody say, There's joy in the house of the Lord. Yes, there is. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet, no. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We 
shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Oh, cause we were the beggars, but now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, but now we're running free. We were forgiven, accepted, and redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Come on, sing that again. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet, come on, we shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise, we shout out your praise, oh yes we do, come on bless the Lord, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Bless your name, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you right now. Thank you for that healing today. Thank you for that spirit of deliverance today in this place. Come on, just lift your hands all over this house right now. Lord, we thank you for that delivering, for that delivering power, for the power to save, for the power to heal for the power to set free in this place today. Lord, we're receptive to what you have for this house today. That we're receptive for what you have for each and every one of us today. We speak the name of Jesus over each and every family. We speak the name of Jesus over each and every person in this house today. Lord, we pray for bondages to be broken in the name of Jesus for people's minds to be set free. Hallelujah. We speak Jesus in this house. Jesus, Jesus.
just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus let me say it again I just want to speak the name of Jesus listen to that right now Jesus Jesus Jesus, 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 Jesus. So many people announce their problems before they say Jesus. They announce what's wrong. They announce everything that's wrong. The anxiety of it all goes before the name of Jesus. But I think it's time we declare the name of Jesus over our life and over our family and over anxiety and depression. Don't you believe that this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. Oh, to every soul held captive by depression. First, I'm going to speak Jesus. Oh, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is healing. Your name is love. I declare healing first. Oh, oh, oh. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy come on say Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus come on declare it shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Oh, shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets. Darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. It's healing. Your name is life. We speak life in this house. Oh. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. Burn like a fire. Come on, worship God. Come on, worship Him this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, worship Him this morning. I want to tell you, Lord. Today, when we worship Him, our problems might still be there in front of us, but we worship Him because of who He is. I'm here to tell you, when, when they went to fight the battle, they started praising Him and worshiping the, the Lord because it confuses the devil. You want your victory? You want your power? You want the healing? we got to start worshiping Him, start exalting Him, start magnifying Him. There's power 
in worship. There's power in worshiping a risen Savior. There's power when we don't feel like it, we still worship Him. When it doesn't look like anything's changing, we still worship Him because there's power. There's Your victory. name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Break it, Lord. to bow at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is nothing too hard for Jesus. Jesus is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He's our soon coming Savior. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. We speak healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you today. We worship you because you are our risen Savior. You are God Almighty. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. There is none like you, O God. I worship you for whom you are. O God, I worship you with everything that's within me. I exalt you with everything that's within me, O God. Father, have your divine way and will within this service, within the airways. O God, have your way. Father, let us be obedient and listen to your call. Listen to your word. Follow you. Do what you say. God, we love you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you this morning. I want you this morning to turn around and greet somebody in the name of Jesus. Say your healing in, in Jesus' name. Your deliverance in Jesus' name. You have that power today. You've got the power. It's in your, it's in your vessels. Now exercise it this morning. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. He's worthy of the glory, worthy of the honor, and worthy of the praise. It's good to be in the Lord's house this morning and feel his presence, and uh, I feel the glory of the Lord in this place. Amen, amen. It's good to see each and every one of you. It's cold outside, but it's warm on the inside. Thank the Lord for his presence and his power in this place. Amen. We're excited about what God is doing in our midst. Uh, I do want to just take a moment and welcome any first-time guests. Is there any first-time guests with us this morning? If you're brand new, just lift your hand. We're not going to make you stand up or nothing. If you're not, you're all home folk. We love you. We're thankful that you're here. And Give the Lord a hand clap for everybody here and watching online today. We're excited that you're in the Lord's house. I do want to just give a quick announcement and let uh, all of you know that, that we are getting geared up already for Vacation Bible School. I say, really? Yes, Vacation Bible School is going to be in June, probably that first or second week in June. And uh, we received all of, the, all of the materials for that, and Pam is going to be um, looking for volunteers. So if you volunteered before, Y'all come on to Pam and talk to her after service today. Let her get your information. And if you want to volunteer this year and you haven't before, see her. And uh, we would love for you to be a part of Vacation Bible School. It's truly a rewarding uh, event each, each and every year. And if you came to the Christmas program this year, you saw some of the fruits of Vacation Bible School because it was all built around. Did y'all enjoy the Christmas program this year? It was fun. And uh, so... Anyway, so all of you, just be, be on the lookout. If you don't come to her, she's going to come to you, all right? So anyway, we're thankful for all that God is doing in our midst. We're excited about uh, the future of Mercy Church and 
the people that aren't even here that we're believing that God's going to send in Jesus' name. We're praying for your family members to be saved in Jesus' name. And uh, listen, and also, we want you to go to Apple or iTunes or YouTube Music or, or Spotify and download our new single that just came out. Do y'all remember a couple weeks back we sang praise and we didn't even know what we were going to do after, after all that praise and worship that morning. The, the power of God was so strong in that service. Well, that was captured in a recording, has been mixed down. Pastor Casey has mixed all that down, and we've got it uploaded, and it's on every major platform to be purchased. And uh, anyway, we're just looking forward to all that God's going to do through Mercy Music. How about that? Is that okay? So we give God praise for it. Look for it. Download it. Make it part of your playlist. I know some of y'all people go to the gym, and you work out the stuff. Uh, you can work out the praise. I can see it. Praise. I can see it right now. Stepping on that on that uh, treadmill. But anyway, we're thankful for you and thankful for you downloading that. Hopefully, we'll have eight or ten songs before long and have a, a whole album that we can release. Would that be all right with y'all? You'd be all right purchasing one of those to play in your car? All right. Sounds great. Pastor Richie, let this pastor know you love and appreciate him today. My wife and I had gone to Greenville a few weeks ago when we were uh, sitting. I don't know where we are exactly at the time, but we saw one of these little small SUVs, you know, one of the, I think it was a Honda or something, one of them little things that says, I want to be a Jeep when I grow up. And uh, th it had a, a spare tire on the back, and the actual cover for the spare tire was open, and you could see the tire inside. It looked like it had been through a paper shredder. I mean, you talk about serious dry rot. I mean, this thing just honestly, it was just hanging in threads. And I'm like, dude, if they need that, they're in trouble. <laughs> because they had just completely ignored it. And I got to thinking about that thing. Like, how many of us ignore our prayer life and ignore our time in the Word and ignore our, our fellowship and our communion with God? And then when something happens, and we hit a major pothole in life, and we need what we need, but we're not sure how to access it because we've just let it sit there and dry rot and get to the point where it's no good to us. Some of you could be like, I need to find a scripture, but first I need to find my Bible because I don't even know where it's at right now. You know, How many people have, have, have just ignored God until it's like, okay, I need something now, so I'm going to try to pray again. I've got a family member that's sick. I've got a bad situation on the job. I've got something going on in my marriage and my relationship, and I need to pray, but I haven't been keeping my prayer life up, so it's difficult. It's almost like it's in shreds. It's almost like it's just from disuse, just sitting there atrophied. But the good news is God is a good and gracious God. And he can restore you. They've got to replace that spare tire. But God can restore you right here, right now, this morning. And he can make it like new. And I just want to challenge you, God. Keep your prayer life up. Even when you're not going through something bad, that's the best time to give him praise for all the good. It's the best time to say thank you. It's the best time to say, God, without you, I wouldn't be where I'm here at this morning. I spent the last two weeks at home, sick with COVID, not feeling well. And I'm so glad to be here this morning and to be in God's presence and get to worship with you guys. And I do not want to let my prayer life and my praise life and my worship atrophy. I don't want to let it get old and dry rotted. I want to keep everything where it's supposed to be. And when I need it, I know where it's at and it's ready to go. So we're going to have a quick prayer. We're going to go to the Lord with our tithes and our offering this morning. You guys will stand with me. Amen. Give praise. We've got baskets up front and in the back. We've got debit machines in the back and our missions basket. This is the third Sunday. So our missions are going uh, for the Falcons Children Home every third Sunday. So that's what today is, the third Sunday. We're going to start doing that. We announced it Wednesday night. So if you were here, you know. But, uh, Thank you for your giving. I've got a quick prayer, and we're going to 
going to uh, continue with another song and just feel free to give. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that we can bring our issues before you. Thank you, Lord, that you are there for us, that you care for us. If there's anybody here this morning who's been letting their prayer life or their devotional time slip, I pray, Lord, that they would get back on track even today, Lord, and we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Ray's coming right now to introduce our speaker to us today, I believe, and and uh, I think. But anyway, while while they're on the way, I just want to remind us: uh, any that would like to go to Bellhaven today, we'll leave at one o'clock from the church here on the church van. If you'd like to ride, one o'clock p.m. to the church Bellhaven. And, uh, one o'clock. One o'clock. We'll leave with the van. I hope you'll go. We're making a difference in Bellhaven. We're making a difference in Bellhaven. And uh, can I just take a second here? First of all, let me, let me say this before I forget it. Sister Arlene is looking for, for a vacation Bible school project. Anybody that's got an old wood boat, small, 
old wood fishing boat. Small. Please see her. All right. Huh? You, you can't want it back because they're going to do something with it. Probably cut it in half or something. Cut it in half. All right. Um, just before our speaker comes, we're making a difference in Bell Haven. We're making a difference in a husky. And I know today's a cold day. It's a very cold day. You, you got out, and there's some at home. that we, ha we have some that are in the hospital. Sister Bernice needs our prayers. We need God to touch and minister healing to her body. And um, so we pray that right now. Lord, that you touch her and her family. God, minister to them right now. We pray it in Jesus' name. We pray for, for Brother Billy Baker, Lord, and for Judy. Lord, touch Billy right now there in the Washington Hospital. Touch his body by the power of Almighty God. Thank you for your healing touch in Jesus' name. Pastor Casey has a word from the Lord, and I know it. I know he has a word from the Lord. I'm feeling something deep in my spirit about what God is about to do in this church. You see all these empty chairs? God's going to use you to fill them up. Because there is, there, it, it, there's an unction, an anointing, that begins to flow. And we began to see that the harvest, the harvest is not the problem. The harvest is out there. If you don't believe it, if we could take a camera and look in Walmart right now, you'd see it full. If you could look in some of these duck throughs, you'd see them pumping gas and they're going about. And many of those folks think nobody really, really cares. We can do a sign campaign. We can put signs in our yards and signs all over the place and billboards up. And, and some do. Some churches use billboards. And, and they get 5% they get results. All those signs and billboards, will, they'll make people aware that there's a church. And there are, other, there are other reasons why people go to church. But if you ask somebody to come to church with you, there is a 95% chance that they will sit in one of these chairs. That is, the, that is the plea of the hour. We're making a difference in Belhaven. We want to, but this is Jerusalem. And I'm believing that this year we are going to fill every chair and there will be people standing because of the miraculous, miraculous outpouring power of God. You keep these testimonies going. You keep telling what God has done. Sister Cleo shared yesterday how the tumor was gone. I want to tell you, God is still hearing and answering prayer. And if he did it for me, if he did it for her, if he did it for her, God will do it for you. Somebody clap your hands and praise the Lord. Now this is, now this guy right here, he's coming up. I asked him a couple of weeks ago when he preached. Because Jenny and I, we've been, we've been away, and we've relaxed, and I thank you for that opportunity of allowing us to do that. But I knew that Casey Fleet had a word from the Lord. And he's going to share it with us this morning. He's, he's my son in the faith. And we, I love Casey Fleet and his family, and I know you do too. Would you give him a big we love you welcome as he comes and preaches the Word of God. Preach it, brother. Come on, y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. It's, it's always a blessing and, and very humbling to be able to be here and to be able to share the gospel you guys because you're home folk, you're family, and it's always humbling to be able to share it with family. Um, sometimes you feel like you're preaching to the choir, you know, uh, but you guys are incredible. You're always supportive. You're always loving, and every time we preach, you tell us it was our best sermon. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it's incredible to be a part of such a great ministry. Um, Pastor Ray 
I actually started the year off, I know, in Bellhaven. Well, his, his, his last year, his first sermon, first series started off about being a Great Commission church. And it really, it really spoke to me that, you know, we hear that and it kind of goes in one ear and out the other about being a Great Commission church. And what a way to start 2024 off than understanding what it means to be a Great Commission church. And we've heard it this morning. He talked about this is our Jerusalem. And you're going to hear a little bit more about that in just a minute. But God's called us to be a Great Commission church. But I want to make this message personal this morning. So the title of my message is A Great Commission You. A Great Commission You. Father, I pray this morning that you will hide me behind the cross, that you will help me, that you will send your Holy Spirit to comfort me, to guide me. I'm just an unworthy vessel this morning, standing here, trying to share the love of your word, trying to encourage your people. And if there's anything I say this morning, God, that is contrary to your will or that is wrong, that is completely on me. But if I say anything this morning that is right and that is true, that leads anyone to you and to your mission and to your goal, God, that is all you. So touch me this morning and help me as I speak your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So I think many times when we hear the term a great commission church, we sit back and think the church has it covered. Remember when I say we, I'm speaking on an individual basis. Because this is what hit me when Pastor Ray was preaching this. We collectively hear it, we collectively know, but sometimes we collectively sit on it. However, God is speaking to you as an individual, yes, you specifically, to be a person that fulfills that great commission. It's not just a command for the church body. It's a command for you as a person. Although the church is fulfilling the Great Commission, to many people within the church, it has become the great omission. We sit on what God has called us to do because we think somebody else has it covered. We go to church on Sunday, we go to church on Wednesday, but we never pray, we never read our Bibles, we never tell somebody Jesus loves them outside of a Sunday. A matter of fact, many of us Christians are probably the worst people to meet outside of a Sunday. It's true. It's true. I've said it many times, me and Pastor Rich talked about it Wednesday night. If there's ever been anybody that's wanted to keep me from the church, it's always church people. It's never people outside of the church. And that is because we have not become a Great Commission you, a Great Commission person. We believe the church collectively is, is, is getting the job done some way, somehow, and that's all that matters to us. Here's a few quotes that I really, really like that I had to use this morning. One says, it is not our choice to spread the gospel or not. It is our death if we do not. The church isn't here today because people sat on the Great Commission. The church is here today because people died for the Great Commission. And some of us today are not even willing to give up a meal for the Great Commission. Expect great things from God, William Carey said, but attempt great things for God. Many of us want great things for God, but we never do great things for God. And this is my favorite. By John Faulkner, I have but one candle 
of life to burn. And I would rather burn it out in a land filled with darkness than in a land flooded with light. I love coming to church on Sunday morning. I love coming to church on Wednesday night. That is when my light grows. That is when my light gets brighter. But this is not fulfilling the Great Commission. You being in a seat this morning is not you fulfilling the Great Commission. You fulfilling the Great Commission is what you do when you leave here. There is a reason some you see people sometimes spending more time with people that are not church folks because what good is light and light? What good is it? Light and light is useless. Light and light means nothing. But if you take a light and darkness, it can change everything. So my scripture this morning, as Pastor Ray has already hit on, but you will receive power. It's Acts 1-8. Very, very, very familiar. But I'm going to pull three types of Great Commission people out of this passage. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Much like a revival, the fulfillment, your fulfillment of the commission does not start with a church. It starts with you. And if it starts with you, I would say a good place would be with the Holy Spirit. So the first thing we see in this passage, the first type of person we see in this passage is a people of power. And I know when we hear that and when we say that, Many times as Pentecostals, we get amped up. I mean, really, we do. We're like, oh, yeah, that's that, you know, whatever, however you view it. But the truth of the matter is that is not what that means. Acts 1 and 8 underscores the transformative power of the Holy Spirit and the resulting boldness in sharing the message of Christ locally and globally. When we say a people of power, we are talking about a people of boldness. Boldness. Not mean. Not arrogant. Not somebody that nobody wants to be around. But a person of boldness. What does that boldness look like to you? A boldness... That you're willing to go into a place of darkness and be light, maybe? Or a boldness that I'm just willing to get up and go to church on Sunday morning. It ain't boldness to get up and go to church. Boldness is what you do outside of the church. Where we may be a little shy of our faith, at one point, now with boldness, we are rooted and no longer ashamed. I'm telling you, if I've ever seen a day in my life where I've witnessed Christians being ashamed of the gospel, it's probably more so today than ever. Really. And I say that because we're not willing to fulfill the Great Commission. And when I talk about fulfilling the Great Commission, I don't mean run around slapping people in the face with scriptures and using your scripture bombs to make somebody feel bad. To fulfill the Great Commission, you must be a people of love and compassion and understanding. This is what boldness looks like. Number one, we truly believe in what we preach, what we teach, and what we hear. We truly believe it. 
We truly believe it. You've heard it said, if you've seen somebody standing in the middle of a road in a vehicle coming that was getting ready to take their life, you would not just stand there. And there's a world standing with the train coming, and we're just standing there. We're still. We're quiet. People don't know you're a Christian. People don't know we're Christian many times. Until we tell them we go to church. We should never have to tell anybody that we go to church. Ever. We truly believe the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer. You cannot doubt it. Jesus Christ is the only way. There's, he is not a way. He's not some way. He is the answer. He is the answer to the problems of the world. We truly believe that he has the power to unify the church. Church division is worse than I've ever seen it. Churches hating churches. Churches not getting along. Pastors not liking other pastors. What are we doing? And we believe Jesus. We have no enemies in the church. We are light helping light to go into darkness. There is no competition. We truly believe that he can change any one. It is not our job to judge any one. God can change anybody. No matter, no matter your, how you perceive, no matter what they've done, no matter what they've been through, no matter the jail cell they're sitting in this morning, I don't care what they've done. Jesus can change anyone. And we must believe that and know that the gospel is for them. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I believe many times in the church today, Christians are gluttoned in the gospel. We eat it all up and we never share it. We're gluttons of the gospel. We hear it and we know it, but we never spread it. When's the last time you prayed for somebody in the streets? When is the last time you prayed for somebody in prison? It doesn't matter what they've done. Stop focusing on the negative and look at the positive. View the outcome. <laughs> Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. This verse emphasizes the idea that our strength and power come from God, empowering us to face challenges and fulfill our purpose. He is the reason. There is nothing that I have ever done, ever, in ministry that will glorify me. And if it does, I'm telling you to look to God. It is not me, it is the God in me. Because if it were me, I would be a failure and would not be ministering the gospel. Because I'm a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. It is Him. It is Him. It is Him. And if it is Him, then why wouldn't I tell you? Why wouldn't I tell somebody else? Ephesians 3. 3 and 20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, imagine according to his power that is at work within us. God can do for you, in you, and through you more than you can ever imagine. Your mind does not have the capacity to imagine what God can do for you. When you have God, you have power. The second type of person that we see in Acts 1-8, and Arlene was one of those people this morning, is a people of testimony. 
of testimony. Now here's, here's the thing. This is what the Holy Spirit gives us the boldness to do. Okay? It isn't a boldness to do crazy stuff. It isn't a boldness to try to be the next theologian. It isn't the boldness to try to argue down an atheist. It is the boldness for you to tell your story and to share your testimony. Because here's the deal. You can slap somebody in the, with, in the face all day long with a Bible that doesn't even believe in the Bible. You're losing a battle. But if you can tell them your story and they can see what God has done in your life, Sometimes that's the only gospel they'll ever need. Because then they're going to know there is truly something different about them, so I've got to peek, at least peek at this Jesus that they follow. They have no choice. So give testimony and be testimony. It's one thing to tell your story, but it's another to use your story. Everything that you've ever been through in this life, you can use to help somebody else. You go through the things that you go through, and you are victorious, not for you, but for those you come in contact with. You've been addicted to drugs before, and God has healed you. That is incredible. Now go help a drug addict. Go help a drug addict. All of us are different in many different ways, with different perspectives. Y'all remember that in election time. Don't let a bunch of lying politicians divide the church. I'm serious. We don't have time for that crap. We don't. We don't have time for it. Everybody has a different perspective, and we should not focus on where we're divided. We should focus on where we meet, on where we're united. Your testimony is your testimony and no one else's. It is yours and nobody can take it away. What you've been through is what you've been through and somebody else is going to always feel like theirs is the worst. It's not about that. We're not here to compare what we've been through. We're here to use what we've been through to help one another. The boldness received through the power of the Holy Spirit not only empowers us for various challenges, but also enables us to share our personal testimonies with confidence. Embrace and share your stories of faith, transformation, and encounters with God. Your testimonies become powerful tools in reaching others with the message of Christ. Your testimony will always give God glory by demonstrating His life changing power your testimony is never to bring you glory ever being a great commission person means you have the boldness to share your story and I'm here to tell you this morning that your story matters your story matters whether you feel like it's this big or whether you feel like it's so big that you don't want to share it. Your story matters. And here's something that I can promise you. The thing that you've been through, the trial that you've made it through, God is going to place somebody in your path that needs that. Every single time. 
Never look at your trials and your tests and your tribulations as something bad. Because here's the deal. If you never had a war, you could never claim a victory. We would walk around really in the mully grubs because we never won a battle. But we are victorious this morning. Every single one of you have, has won some sort of battle. You have some sort of testimony to share. We are victorious. It's the reason we come and worship. It's the reason we give Him praise. It's not a game. We are winners. We know the story. For every test and every trial, there's a victory. And when there's a victory, what do we do? We celebrate. We celebrate. If you are a Ravens fan or a 49ers fan, you celebrated yesterday. But you wouldn't have if you lost. We celebrate because we have not lost. We have won. Your story is unique and valuable. Your experiences, your struggles and triumphs are part of a larger narrative that God is weaving. Don't underestimate the impact your story can have. An inspiring, encouraging, and bringing others Hope. Your journey matters. So God is touching me. I want y'all to get this. I want you to understand. That sometimes the thing you've been through might be a conversation piece for somebody. It might be something for them to look down on you. But there's somebody that needs your testimony. There's somebody that needs your story. Revelation 12 and 11 says, And they have defeated him. By the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Christians should never be afraid. You should never be afraid of your testimony and what you've been through. Don't be ashamed. I don't care how they talk about you. I don't care what they say. Because when you can show them that you've been through it and you can show them that you're victorious, they have no choice but to look at it and say, God is doing something in their life. God is winning somehow. And then the last thing that we see in this passage is a people of diversity. A people of diversity. He told them to go everywhere. This one is important. Jesus said that we would be witnesses everywhere. In Jerusalem, as Pastor Ray said this morning, in Judea, in Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth. This simply means that there is no limit to who the good news is for. There is no limit. And sometimes when we view that passage, we view it geographically. But this morning, I want you to view that passage diversely. There are people that don't look like you, that don't act like you, that you disagree with, that you may not like what they've done, 
You may not like how they act. And it's quick and easily to exclude them from God's blessings. It's easy. But the passage is clear. It's not just about everywhere. It's about every one. Everyone matters. Everyone. And not just in your local church, but in your community, at your job, at the gas station, at the restaurant, everywhere you go, that person matters. That person you come in contact with matters. There is strength that comes from embracing and welcoming individuals from various backgrounds, cultures, and walks of life within the church community. In other words, we focus on what brings us together, not what divides. Our common ground is always the cross. Galatians 3.28 says, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. And when we look around, we see diversity. We see people of different testimony. We see many different aspects of Problems that we've all been through. But what I see is I see a unified church. I see a church that is fulfilling the Great Commission. I see a people that is willing to reach out to this local community and say you are welcome to Mercy Church no matter what you look like, no matter how much... No matter how much money you have or don't have, no matter what you've been through, no matter your lifestyle, you're welcome into the kingdom of God. We welcome you. We reach out to you. And 95% of the people that you invite will come sit beside you. And do not be afraid or ashamed to invite somebody that you think wouldn't come to church. Because maybe it's that person that will come. Maybe it's that person that will come and change their life forever. And then you have one more light that can go shine in darkness. That is how you fulfill the Great Commission. This verse underscores the unity and equality found in Christ, emphasizing the idea that diversity within the body of believers is a reflection of God's love and acceptance to all of us. Please stand all over the building. All I can tell you this morning is that I'm glad that I was not excluded. I'm glad that I was accepted. Because I don't deserve it no more than anybody else. There are people that have never darkened the doors of a church that deserve just as much as I do. There are people that are living lifestyles in this community that deserve this same gospel that you and I get. So my charge to you this morning is simple. Be confident. Be bold. 
tell your story with confidence and boldness. And tell your story with confidence and boldness to everyone. To everyone. You matter. You matter. And so does your story. Believe in your story. Be confident in sharing your highs and your lows. In your story, others may find echoes of their own journey. Your authenticity can be a beacon of hope and inspiration. So don't hold back. Share your story boldly, knowing that through it, God's transformative love can touch hearts and change lives. And lastly, before I turn this over to Pastor Ray, the church does not grow by adding seats. The church grows by adding sins. And I'm sending you this morning to be a beacon and light and to share your testimony. Come on, give it up, y'all. Give it, give it to the Lord. My God. Mm. The Apostle Paul shared his story. That's what he did. He shared his story. If I never hear another sermon to challenge the church, I can say that that was probably one of the greatest challenges to say, oh God, forgive me for when I did not tell my story. For when I became when I entered the place of being passive and afraid. But you, you gave me power. You gave me power at salvation, and especially when the Holy Ghost came upon me. And I'm the one that cowered. Oh, God, forgive me. For my testimony is is to help somebody else because you brought me through the darkest hour. And there are people groups that I thought I was better than. I wonder how many people in this building will say, I repent. Because somebody put it on Facebook, before God can heal the land, there's got to be some repentance. And I wonder how many, I wonder if there's a hundred people that would get out of their seats this morning and say, I'm coming to repent. And I'm going to turn this thing around. And I'm going to invite people. And I'm going to tell my story. And I'm going to reach people. And I'm going to love people that, that, that really I excluded. But the gospel of the Lord has challenged me today. And I feel that challenge. As much as I felt challenged when I was lost and I needed God, I feel the challenge to enter the Great Commission, me. The Great Commission, you. Start moving. Start moving. If you feel that pull, I want you to start moving. Come on. That's what this altar is for. Come on. Is there a hundred people that would say this morning, I've got to repent. Oh, God, I want you to use me. Oh, God, I'm coming. I'm coming to you today with repentance in my heart. Oh, God, I want to be a person of power. I want to be a person that will tell the testimony. And I want to be a person that will go to everybody, anybody, oh, God, that you'll send me to. I want to be a great commission. What is the great commission used that he preached about this morning? How many more? 
How many more would step out of your seat and say, I'm asking God for the boldness. I'm asking God for the boldness. The power represents boldness. I'm asking God to give me boldness just to tell my story. Just to tell my story. All you got to do is just tell your story. You don't have to slam a, a, a Bible scripture at them. Just tell your story. How many more? How many more will say, I'll join that. I'll join that. I'll join. How many of you watching by the internet? A while ago, I looked, and there was 12, 15 people, 20 people watching by the Internet. Oh, God. And that was on one one of the forums. I don't know who's watching on other forums this morning. But, oh, you, you just slip up your hand somehow and say, oh, God, I repent. Lord, I want to I wanna repent this morning. I want to ask you to forgive me, God, for not being bold with my testimony to the peoples of the land. Oh, God, forgive me today. And Lord, I want you to change me. I want you to change Ray Faircloth Sr. this morning. I want to be an extrovert for the gospel. I want to be willing when somebody says, I, I, I need prayer. I want to be willing to do more than say, I'll pray for you. Oh, God, help me to pray right then. Help me to stop in Walmart, in the drugstore, at the gas station, and say, "Oh Lord, my friend, ask for prayer." And Lord, I don't, Lord, I don't know exactly what to say, but I know I can call on you and I ask you to touch them. Somebody call me on the phone and say, "Remember this in prayer." Lord, I want to have the boldness to say, "Well, let's pray." Help me, oh God, give us boldness in this church. Let us become a part of the Great Commission. You. That we be a part of the great commission and that it, we take it individually. And oh God, that we will be willing to tell our testimony. Good, bad, ugly, whatever. But oh God, that we be willing to simply step out of our box and tell our testimony. This is what the Lord has done for this old wretched sinner. I don't just go to church. I go to the Great Commission. And that Great Commission starts when we walk out the doors. Great Commission doesn't necessarily happen in the house, as Pastor Casey has said. Great Commission starts when we get in our cars. We go out to the restaurants and we go out to, and we go back to our homes and we go to Bell Haven and we go to, to the ministry center. Where will we go? The Great Commission. Thank you. Lord, may we look at people that we disagree with. May we not have to be right. Your word is right. But may we be, may we, may we be moderate in our opinions to the point that we when it comes to the things of this world, we will not get so sidetracked that we, that we have to have our way. But we'll simply tell, this is what the Lord has done for me and this is what the Lord can do for you. May we look at society. May we look at people around us hurting, wounded, confused. And may we learn how to love like Jesus loved. Hallelujah. May we learn how to love the sinner. If the world talks about us, if the church talks about us, let them say he was among sinners. And we will be ministering among sinners. We will give the gospel. We'll take our light that we have grown strength from during our Sunday services and our Wednesday services and that light that has gained strength and brightness, we'll take it out because the world didn't give us to us and the world can't blow it out. The world can't put it out. That light will illuminate in a lost and dying, hurting world. God, I pray that you'll pe- speak to people this morning to go out of this building changed, changed, never the same, changed to be bold with power, to be people of testimony, 
and to be people that are willing to look in the great commission to the next person that they can share their story. Red, yellow, black, white, rich, poor, big, small. From any ethnicity, any background, oh God, we receive the word today. We receive the challenge. sometimes we feel uncomfortable. We feel like that we are being put on the spot. We're getting ready to leave. We're getting ready to go out to our assignments. I was studying this week and I'm learning that Satan has assignments. Satan is very strategic. And that's the reason when we opened up the service, I cursed every assignment of the devil. I break every assignment of the devil. I, 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 I come against it. Anything that he has scheduled for me, my schedule comes from God. And anything that the enemy has scheduled for me, I break it right now in Jesus name I take authority over it right now I'm going to ask you to do me a favor because we're standing we're all standing anyway and I'm going to ask you if you would to, if you want to pick up your pocketbooks and stuff but I want you to just come this way and I want to have a closing prayer as close to this altar as we can get everybody everybody because the Great Commission you begins with you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Everyone is welcome in these altars. Everyone is welcome in these altars. Thank you so much. from all walks of life. I'm praying, Lord, that you would send even greater diversity among us. People that speak different languages, Lord, send them. But let us be willing to go find them. And let them know that there's room in Mercy Church for them. People that we don't agree with. May they hear from us. You'll be loved. That Mercy Church is very conservative 
when it comes to Bible principles and that we won't bend the Bible to fit our lifestyle but whatever is preached will be preached with love and compassion. And that we are very, not, not only conservative on Bible and Scripture, but we are very moderate on opinions. So your opinion is your opinion. And if it doesn't say it in the Word of God, you work it out. We will not judge you and we won't preach our convictions from the pulpit. We won't clothesline preach from the pulpit, but we'll tell you that if it's not scripturally written and where we can show it, you work it out. You and God work it out. But while we are conservative on scripture, and moderate on opinion, we will be absolutely liberal on our love. Love for mankind. We will turn no one away. God, put this covering on us based on this message that we've heard this morning. In the name above every name. I thank you, Lord, for healing the sick. I thank you in the midst of this kind of a time, you can heal the sick. And, and just, like that, just like that pressure left from Arlene's, even her head, the pressure, it, she felt the, 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 the ease, the, the pressure was gone, the weight was gone. May somebody feel a weight being lifted right now, chains being dropping off, falling off. As we become a Great Commission church, and we realize it becomes a Great Commission, it begins with a Great Commission youth. Every one of us represents that great commission you. God, put the covering. Challenge us now to go and be your disciples. Everywhere we go, in Jesus' name. Bellhaven or right down the street, wherever it's at, we go as your people of power, of testimony, and loving everybody. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, God bless you. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise, everybody. God bless you. Happy Sunday. Amen.